All right, folks, another story that we've been covering deals with the issue of Facebook and civil rights organizations. Yesterday, of course, we had uh, Vanita Gupta on the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights with regards to them joining Color of Change when it comes to when it comes to criticizing Facebook for their actions. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. With the holidays just around the corner, now is the time to order holiday cards for family and friends. Now, you you know doggone well. You mail out holiday cards. They come in the mail, and you want to really uh, uh, impress your friends and family or your business folks with that. So this year, you can create custom holiday photo cards quickly, easily, and affordably at simplytoimpress.com. Now, simplytoimpress.com is your holiday photo ca card headquarters with thousands of unique Christmas cards and other designs to choose from. Now look, this is very simple. All you do is upload your family photos. Or you can get them from Facebook or Instagram, personalize the text, and then you're done. It's that simple. Simplytoimpress.com prints your cards professionally on your choice of premium card stock in just a few days and rushes them straight to your door. The New York Times uh, wire cutter and named Simply to Impress their favorite custom photo card service. Simply to Impress even offers foil cards and hundreds of great holiday card designs for your business as well. Now look, if you place your order today, you'll save 30% and get free shipping. 30% savings and free shipping. All you got to do is enter the promo code DEAL, D-E-A-L, at checkout. Now save big on holiday photo cards today by using the promo code DEAL at Simply to Impress. Dot com that's simply to impress dot com and remember when you support them you also are supporting Roland Martin unfiltered because they are now back to your Roland Martin unfiltered video. Uh, and uh, what they what they did went after them because again because of color change was critical of Facebook Facebook hired an external organization a right wing uh, PR group to attack them and to also tie them to George Soros somehow suggesting that he is completely funding color of change it was a blockbuster story. Uh, in the New York Times, uh, and that led to a meeting uh, between Rashad Robinson, the head of uh, Color of Change, as well as Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook. Joining us right now is Rashad Robinson to tell us about that particular meeting. Rashad, glad to have you back on Roller Martin Unfiltered. Always great to be with you. Uh, and so the meeting took place when? Was it yesterday or today? It was yesterday. It was yesterday um, afternoon um, out um, at their offices in uh, the Bay. And so um, you, there were a number of things that you wanted to cover in the meeting. First of all, first of all, uh, how long did the meeting last? Was it only Sheryl Sandberg you were meeting with? And what was the outcome? So the meeting was about an hour and 15 minutes. It included um, two colleagues of mine, my head of campaigns, Arisha Hatch and um, Brandy Collins Dexter, who's been leading this work, who's a senior campaign director for Color of Change. So both Arisha and Brandy from our side, and then um, um, two uh, senior policy folks um, from the Washington, D.C. office flew out um, to also join um, Sheryl Sandberg on her side. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg stopped in for a couple of minutes uh, to say hi, um, uh, but for the bulk, for the, the basic hour plus, it was um, the six of us. And in that meeting, uh, you obviously covered uh, what took place with Facebook hiring this organization coming after you guys. Uh, but what else um, came out of that meeting? What, in, in the resolutions? So yeah, there was a couple of resolutions. Our, the, you know, heading into this meeting and, and long before um, there was any sort of request, um, any there was any sort of news from the New York Times about um, whether about this definers um, organization attacking us, we had been demanding a civil rights audit. And I know Vanita probably talked about some of that, but Color of Change for a couple of years now have been demanding a civil rights audit of of Facebook, similar to the work that we had done in Airbnb. The leadership conference and other organizations over time have joined us um, in those calls. Um, but we had gotten no feedback. We knew they had been interviewing people. We knew that they'd been talking to people. They came to our office and talked to us, but there was no transparency. So one of our demands was a public reporting um, from Facebook on where they're at in the civil rights audit, what they've done, what they know, um, so that we actually can provide scrutiny of an organization that we have no um, ability to trust at this point. Um, Sheryl Sandberg, um, towards the end of the meeting, committed uh, to um, a public release of their findings up to this point by the end of the year. They also committed to um, a process on a public process around implementation starting next year. Um, they also committed to ongoing work around um, around sort of continuing the audit with the recognition that these problems didn't happen overnight and they won't be solved overnight. 
those were the pieces that we walked away feeling, um, you know, good about or feeling like we are, we're at least making some progress. Uh, and again, initially, they were, re they were refusing to release that audit, correct? Not only were they refusing to release the audit, they were giving us any information about where they're at. They were basically like having all these conversations and saying, don't worry, trust us. Uh, and even, you know, when we got into the meeting, they didn't start the meeting off by saying, hey, here's, you know, here's what we're going to do. We really pressed them that there was no way that we could sort of keep um, engaging at a, at a level of trust unless we had something released publicly. And so we got the commitment that by the end of the year, Facebook will do a public release of where they're at in the audit. And, you know, that was one of the pieces that felt positive, however, Roland. There were a number of pieces that still um, are of deep concern, everything from the issues you're dealing with to the, the ways in which they have attacked us. And, and again, when you talk about the issues that I'm dealing with, again, one of the things that I've talked about, and not just with me, but also these technology companies out here, not only my capacity as owner of this show, but also being vice president yeah. digital uh, for the National Association of Black Journalists, uh, is how these companies are also investing in and supporting black content creators. Uh, with Facebook Watch launching, the, launching their, uh, you know, 20 shows they're funding, none are African American, uh, none are black, me black media companies. And so uh, we've also been looking at these other tech companies as well, and unfortunately, uh, new media is looking like old media in terms of uh, shutting folks out. And, uh, and then, of course, when you talk about uh, you know African American consumers over-indexing on social media, driving these numbers, uh, and what Black folks want to know is that look, don't just treat us as as folks who can help grow your your stock price, who can also grow your company with advertising. We also want to see African Americans who be able to build their own companies by virtue of working with companies like Facebook and being funded. This is, the, this is one of the largest communications platforms the world has ever seen and one of the most powerful corporations. And in the innovation has the potential to bring us into the future, but their policies and practices are in some ways driving us into a past where we lose some of the things that we already won and fought for. One of the things that we really focused on with Cheryl was this sort of false dichotomy that sort of is at the heart of some of the problems at Facebook. That you know, um, they they kind of put this idea of like fighting and, and hoping that conservatives don't feel like they're being attacked um, on the same level as civil rights. And so they almost see like when you're talking about something that's black or or women or Latino or or LGBT, that that's liberal and it's left and it all is inside of this like left bucket, which is not accurate. And and that goes to sort of all the ways in which they have, um, every time they bring up questions around voter suppression, they also talk about voter fraud. And they did that when they were doing their, um, when they were doing their war room. Um, over and over again, part of the problem is that this company doesn't completely and fully understand civil rights. And so while I felt like we had a really good meeting um, with Cheryl and that we really pressed that, we really sort of pushed that moment. Um, this has to trickle down throughout the whole organization. And so this is not whether or not Cheryl or Mark are good people or bad people. That's not my job to like figure that out or get into their heads. This is about a structure in a huge organization that has systemic problems all throughout, that is sort of rotten throughout and has and needs to be fixed and needs at the level of accountability that will um, move the process forward. We asked Cheryl um, directly for the information that they obtained through definers, what, what definers did. And I asked for that as the leader of an organization who's been attacked and figuring out what's been put out there in the world and how do I keep my folks safe. Um, they did not give us that information. They also um, did not agree to fire Joel Kaplan, who in our opinion and many others' opinion has been the chief architect of this idea that, you know, conservatives getting the same amount of time talking about climate is the same, is like climate change or something like that, is the same thing as you having a show or um, Latino folks having a show. Um, it's not the same thing. And trying to help them not put sort of black people's ability to be heard and counted and visible as just as politics. Um, we talked a lot about that there's right and there's left, but there's also right and wrong. In the systemic exclusion of black people from um, the employee base of the corporation to how they um, engage um, uh, consultants and other folks to how they um, treat 
um, media um, individuals like yourself. All of this speaks to um, the reasons why we called for the civil rights audit in the first place, to bring sunlight, transparency, and visibility to these problems. Because if we are not, as a civil rights community, holding institutions like Facebook accountable, who you know will come to our organizations and offer us checks and you know say nice things to us or show up to our events, um, but their actual real power is about ensuring that our people have the ability to use this platform to build their businesses, to earn a living, and to speak their mind in our democracy. And those are the things that we have to fight for, and we have to be unapologetic in it. And so we made really clear demands. We got some of the things we wanted. When we came out of that meeting, we talked to the press very clearly about the things that we don't, we didn't want. And we're continuing to press. We're continuing to talk to investors. We're continuing to talk to folks in the regulatory community, like the FTC. We're continuing to talk to people on Capitol Hill, like Senator Booker and Senator Warner and others. Um, and we will continue to talk to the folks at Facebook who you know, know that they now have to talk to us and they have to deal with us. And they recognize that when we come to the table, um, that we're, not, we're coming to the table with clear demands and we expect clear results. And I think I need people to quite to understand. I, I, I'm w watching uh, our uh, people who are commenting as we speak right now uh, on, um, uh, on uh, uh, Periscope uh, and watching them on, on these different platforms. And, and, and this is what I don't think they quite understand, uh, is that in uh, by eMarketer predicted in 2018, Google and Facebook will capture nearly 48% of new U.S. digital advertising spending. Uh, I've seen some reports where they put it around even 70%. That means two companies literally uh, are grabbing those dollars. The point we're making uh, is that we want to ensure not only are black consumers being able uh, to be known and heard, black media companies are getting opportunities uh, to also participate in this, but we also don't see uh, folks being pushed aside. That's why this is critically important uh, because as we are moving forward with, forward with technology and we're seeing this where broadband is not becoming, it's not the future, it's the present. The reality is what we don't want to see uh, is exactly what has happened in the last 100 plus years uh, where uh, black media companies and black folks have been pushed aside uh, and then are left scra scrapping for a couple of dollars uh, and the opportunity to be able to present different perspectives because let's just be clear, it's not like you got uh, shows like this right now uh, on cable news, on broadcast news. Oh, sure, you got a black person who's hosting, but what people need to understand is they're not deciding what goes on. They're not deciding those guests who are coming on as well. On this show, I decide the stories we cover, where we broadcast from, and having access to these platforms and being supported is important. Yeah, I mean, I think I, sometimes I hear from folks like, you know, on Twitter or, or other social media, like, why don't you just turn off Facebook? Why do you guys just boycott Facebook? And I'm like, well, sure, if you want to turn off Facebook, that's great. But there are two, but Facebook right now has as many users as there are Christians in the world. Um, that's how large this is. So simply telling people to sort of turn it off, um, that's actually not um, a realistic expectation for um, a mother who's starting a, a business in Tallahassee um, and wants to reach the marketplace or for a new journalist that wants to break through and get their story covered to simply tell them like, um, OK, this platform's not treating you well, just don't use it. Actually, that is not how civil rights works. When the buses didn't treat us well, we organized and forced them to treat us well when, um, and to treat us fairly. When the lunch counters wouldn't serve us, we went in and we forced them to serve us. And now these new platforms that are being built um, you know, and, be, and, and are benefiting from all of the infrastructure in this country, which we as black people have built, um, be, benefiting from the, the net neutrality and the cable lines and all of the technology that has been put in the ground to allow for an organization like Facebook to grow and flourish and be the platform that it is, um, it cannot leave us out. And that is part of the work that we have to do to both fight 
to hold them accountable, and to use all of the various levers, right? We turned out in tremendous numbers this election cycle. There were new people heading into Capitol Hill that we put there. Now, they've got to have the hearings. They've got to do the work um, and, um, to bring um, the Facebook folks up there and to actually dig into all these various ways in which this platform um, has prevented um, real progress. Um, and, and, you know, and quite frankly, um, everything from um, having a culture that hasn't allowed for black people to flourish to having a platform that weaponized race during the last election to how the algorithms on the platform can allow someone to say, I want to I want to rent my apartment, but I don't want to um, I want to make sure that no black people see this rental ad. Um, you can do those things are happening on the platform right now. And unless we do the work to force it to change, um, it will only get worse. It will and, only become and, 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 deeper. And so that is why we felt this is so important. And now sort of being um, both in the room um, at the highest levels, but also with a clear understanding that we will um, continue to hold them accountable is the sort of gift that Facebook gave us by attacking us because they really attacked the wrong organization. Well, and, um, and, and, and let's, also, let's also be just, just honest. The reality is here. In yep. 25 years, we will be a nation majority of people of color. And the reality is the things that you are fighting for today, the things I'm fighting for today, is also recognizing we are a changing America. And companies today, the reality is what, Facebook has got what, 2 to 4% black employees? The reality is when Reverend Jackson started his fight uh, against Silicon Valley, it was about opportunity. This isn't about handouts. This isn't about, oh, as you said, oh, please cut me a check. It's like, no, as James Brown said, uh, he said, uh, I'll open the door and I'll get it, my get it myself. That's what folks are saying is want to be able to have the opportunity to compete. And so it's holding folks accountable. And what you are doing is no different than what the NAACP did to ABC, NBC, CBS, the New York Times, the Washington Post, all of these media companies. Uh, it's the exact same thing. It's simply a new day. Absolutely. And, and you know, and, and you, and you um, as an independent voice, has, have really helped to, to move this conversation, right? Because we've even had problems at times getting mainstream media, um, cable news, to cover, to cover this story. They are invested and deeply um, aligned with Facebook. And so some of the ways in which it didn't actually, we couldn't get really covered on some of these problems until the New York Times story broke. And even then, um, they, you know, wanted to cover other angles. Um, but um, part of the fa reason is, is folks like you covered it, our members and people who went to colorofchange.org signed petitions and raised their voices and made us unignorable. And as a result, a civil rights audit, a public civil rights audit will be coming by the end of the year that will give us the ability to start looking closely and holding them more accountable. Um, more news stories have come out in the last 24 hours about actually things that Sheryl Sandberg and others at Facebook um, still haven't told us about um, the attacks they have made on our organization and others. And we recognize that right now we have a, a mix of momentum that can help us hold this company accountable. That you just mentioned Google. Google is now heading to Capitol Hill next week, and there's going to be hearings on some of their work. Um, the, the reason why they cut that $5,000 check to Cindy, um, Cindy Hyde-Smith Cindy Hyde Smith. in, in, um, in um, in uh, Mississippi, yep. even after she made that comment about lynching, right, and claim, first claimed that they didn't know that she made the comment, which is rich that Google didn't use Google, right? <laughs> uh, the reason why these companies are behaving this way is because they are trying to avoid um, some of the things that are happening in Europe with antitrust, yeah. where they're being where they're being hit with these fines because they are actually monopolies, and because they and 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 the way the monopolies behave is they can cut people out the way that they are doing to you. They can treat they can do whatever they want because they've cut out the competition. And so what they are trying to do is avoid that. And they're giving money to both sides. They're giving money to the Democrats and they're giving money to the Republicans. And they think it's all the same and they think they can just play both sides. And that's also why um, we need independent voices like you, but we also need independent voices like Color of Change who yes, don't indeed. take money from them. Because otherwise what we end up with is this situation where Facebook has decided that they've gotten everyone where they want them and they're gonna keep doing what they've always done. All right, Rashad Robinson, Color Change. We appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. 
Always appreciate you. You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com.